Real the World Written by Tsar Yoshi Chapter 622 History Catches Up Flash! In a jet of light, Valet streaked across the room, trailing a green stripe from her mane and tail as she jetted towards the race central platform where Navarra stood frozen. Her cutie mark tingled and her nose burned with the increasing proximity to Stanza, but that machine was inert and it could wait. She had one target and let out a reverberating yell as she dropped onto the platform, swinging around behind him, swinging around behind him to cut off his most obvious avenue of escape. Navarre didn't even try to run. He sat back, put his four hooves in the air, and closed his eyes, a grimace of resignation and acceptance on his face. Huh? Valet raised an angry eyebrow, circling him with a wide stance so she could keep tabs on as many of the room's scientists as possible. You're just going to sit there! Really? I know who you are, Navarra sighed in an eerie voice that bordered on Gurley. Admiral Valet of Ironridge, Artifice of Luna, my last and accidentally greatest work. I've been expecting you for a while. Ah, the lay patted her flank. And you apparently know what I do, too, because you didn't even bother setting a trap for me. Then you probably know what I want, too. She glared at Navarra's body, making a point of staring at it without staring at the pony inside. Navarra sighed. Get on with yourself. There's nothing I can do to stop it. Valet twitched. You know, given why I want your head in the first place, I seriously doubt that. You know how to get around my cutie mark? Where's the other boot? Why are you just giving up? No, I don't know, Navarra countered, looking like she was dragging out something that should have been over instantaneously. Ever since I awoke in my new form without memories, you've been the unknown factor. A terror of my past... Something I created with methods and science now lost the time. Every second of my time since has been spent on self-preservation, trying to forestall this inevitable reunion. And now I have failed, and my time has run out. Valet continued circling. Well, if that isn't vaguely depressing, I don't know what is. Bananas, are you going to try and guilt me into leaving you alone? Navarre airily sighed. Even with your aid, I couldn't save myself from the debts I've incurred in seeking survival and absolution, Artifice. Nor would I presume to desire it. Look at me, and behold, granted a fresh slate by my own last resort, a freedom from anything I may have incurred but you, I turned to my old notes for salvation. I resurrected a demon of the ancients in hopes it would protect me from your return, yet was left frozen and alone in seconds. Now, my soul belongs to Isvaldi. It will be a mercy to the world and myself once you lay my body to final rest in the tomb it deserves. Valet's eyes widened, and she slapped him. Bananas, no! She bared her teeth, glaring. Stop being dramatic and don't even think! about holding my sister's body hostage. I don't want you dead, I want you gone. Your sister's... Navarra's eyes widened in sudden terrified comprehension. Oh dear Flameface. You didn't even know? Billy blanched. Knock that off! You just said you read notes or something and stop calling me an artifice. I am not artificial. You want this body, Navarra breathed. That's why. I always knew you were after me, but that's why. You're going to separate. His eyes unfocused in abject horror. Oh no. Bah! Valet tilted her head, and suddenly her cutie mark flared with lethal danger. Before she could even react, Navarre had moved, kicking her with all his strength and throwing her from the platform. Hey! You! The world went green. All the lights fluctuated in sync, dropping their sterile white color and plunging the room into a negative light where shadows seemed brighter and light things were dark. Valet instantly became aware as she caught herself in midair that the rest of the workers and scientists had fled, and then an eldritch groan from the rail cart captured her attention. Stanza 
was moving. With a single stroke of its wing against Keys, the broken alicorn blasted brittle air from its organ pipes, creaking at its stone throne. Stanza's eyes gleamed emerald as it cracked and straightened, metal braces twisting themselves as its broken limbs raised it into a sitting position. Fully upright, it regarded a central platform with a deathly presence, and the air before it shimmered in a cylinder stretching all the way to the hall. Vili squinted. Within the cylinder, Navarre was completely petrified. She flipped back to where her friends were waiting, less endangered, but still on edge. The crown stabbed into Stanza's chest glowed, fluctuated, and burst. A crackling beam of green and black energy as wide as Valet's barrel lanced from it, seeming to appear in midair between Stanza and Navarro rather than take time to fly from one to the other. Navarro was impacted, lifting into the air as his body danced and burned and blackened with green flames. Holes began to melt into his lower legs, his fur congealed into a hard black shell, and a jagged, pit-riddled horn burst from his forehead, eyes losing their pupils and becoming one solid color. His mane and tail froze into translucent frills, and a cutie mark burst from his chest, glowing with color, as the beam retracted and drew it back into the crown on Stanza's chest. When the display was done, Stanza's beam faded, and the lights slowly returned to normal, though a glow of color remained emanating from the crown where the stolen cutie mark hovered. Niala's empty body remained stuck in place, a faint shimmering in the air still holding it down, a shimmering that also covered Stanza's stone horn. The statue had a colorless telekinetic field. That... that thing's operational, Valet breathed, watching Stanza with wide eyes. Could it do that before? Maple stood strong in place, bolstered by her harmonic energies from the Windigo heart and holding Starlight close. No, Starlight answered, meeting Stanza's glowing eyes with a glare. It couldn't. A low note emanated from the organ, wretched and mournful, yet somehow tinged with pride as Nyala's shell rocked in its invisible grasp, as if to say, here. This is concerning, Gerardo remarked, far too calmly for the situation. Very, very concerning. Is that so, a new voice said from behind him? I thought it was a wonderful showing, that machine proving it's good for something after all. How many birds did that kill with one stone? I don't think I can keep count. Everyone tried to whirl without taking their eyes off Stanza, except Valet. She didn't need to. Yo, Chauncey, what's up? Then Chauncey was between them and Stanza, leaving their backs to the exit without any need to watch two things at once. He regarded a statue in its hovering mode of cutie mark light, then turned to face them, the crown symbol emblazed on its high collar and mitre, suddenly recognizable as the same spindly twisted crown embedded in Stanza's chest. Chauncey regarded everyone for a moment, then sighed. I'm not entirely pleased with the way this has gone down. Keep talking, Valet said. I don't know what's going on, but I came to bust someone up and I haven't busted anyone up yet. And what I want is right over there. I figured as much, Chauncey shrugged beneath his robes. You know, when a party of patriots from another country wanders into my realm, steals my experiments, and interferes with my plans, I feel I have every right to be mad. Haven't I gone out of my way time and time again to help you lot? I've welcomed you into Isvaldi, forgiven you your role in Puddles' disappearance, done my part to rig things in the tournament towards your favor, and you repay me by sneaking into my facility in Jaya, stealing Puddles again. Now you come here to make threats? Gerardo cleared his throat. Excuse me, 
But good endeavours do not abate the presence of other, more sinister actions. What is all of this? He waved a talon at everything. Starlight glared at him. I didn't sneak into your gyre tunnels. Someone knocked me out and locked me up in there. <sighs> Chauncey sighed. I don't know what I have to do to work with you or earn your trust. Fortunately for us all, I'm in a very forgiving mood, so I'm willing to overlook the way your demise of my Windigo caused me the utility of my best scientist and several years' worth of effort. But I'm tired of all this mistrust between us. Do you look cornered to yourselves? I'm letting you walk away at any time. Name any other peace offerings you'd like, and I'll give it to you. Stanza! Vlees snapped her wing, pointing at the dark tunnel in the wall Stanza's reels led to. Not in the room! Not a weapon like that! Easier done than said. Chauncey closed his eyes, and Stanza's platform rumbled, a mournful note playing out as the alicorn was carried toward the wall. You'll want to grab that body to stop it from flying away after his grasp breaks. With pleasure, Gerardo swooped ahead of Valet, using his larger bulk to pin Niala's empty form down as Stanza's field vanished. I have her! Valet eyed the retreat warily. Cool, she said. Cool! Now I want you to take that body, take the piece of moon glass containing its real soul, and put them back together. Give me back my sister. Chauncey fixed her with a hard look. Regrettably, that is beyond my ability. Vili glared and tapped a hoof. But I can provide an explanation, Chauncey continued. I'm surprised you didn't ask for one earlier. I have nothing to hide from you here. And am willing to explain everything. He started walking back toward the observation platform where Gerardo held Niala, completely concealed save for his face by his robes. The manipulation of brands is a subject of extreme interest to me for reasons I will reveal. Obsidian can extract them from Cerosians. If you're from Anred, you've likely stumbled across our means of growing properly attuned bodies around brands encased in obsidian. Stanza is a research project trying to develop a way to remove brands that can be switched on or off instead of leaving them stuck. But breaking a brand free from its properly attuned body outside of a Cerosian is exceedingly difficult. The only known method requires the destruction of a Windigo heart. Do you see the problem with this? Valet continued tapping. Chauncey fixed her with his gaze. You want a Cerosian body and a brand inside Moonglass to be recombined? Provide me with the time and components, and I will use a black mare to grow it a body, wait years for the brand to manifest, remove it with a Windigo heart, and transfer it to its original vessel, then kill the new body so they don't recombine. Tell me this is what you want, and to earn your trust, I will do it. What? Vali finally blanched. Bananas, no, that's messed up! Just do whatever it was they did in Ice Reach to make me! Then you see the problem, Chauncey whispered. There's clearly a better, more instantaneous way. Some method of withdrawing brands easily and transferring them from anywhere to anywhere. Unfortunately, Navarra's memory was wiped when he forcibly switched bodies. The stallion I found and brought here on my expedition to investigate Puddles' possession was barely a year old in memory. And any research notes on the procedure used to assemble you no longer exist. He looked down the tunnel after Stanza and sighed. 
And you've rendered my best scientist useless by killing off the Windigo that was the base of all his research. Lily gritted her teeth. You're going to have to slow down in about a million different directions, buddy, because I'm not following, and I'm not sure I want to. Stanza was his best attempt to create a machine that could cause that effect. As you just witnessed, Stanza has the power to remove brands, but only from Cerosians. That beam fails in obsidian and causes flesh damage to other creature types. Starlight cleared her throat. He's saying he doesn't know how to put Niala back together. Navarro lost his memory just like Niala did and forgot how to do it too, and they needed puddles for research and finding that way again. That's a succinct way of putting it, Chauncey nodded. That body is yours. Take it. It's the latest in my series of peace offerings to you. Now, if you ever want to do anything with it, his eyes fend. Let's sit down and have a talk. Because we're going to have to work together. End of chapter 622